The 2021 24-inch iMac. Sleek, powerful, efficient. It's a great all-in-one desktop Mac. Even as a lifelong PC guy, I gave it an overall favorable rating in my review. However, one weak point I found was the lack of ports. And while two Thunderbolt and two 10 gigabit type C ports do provide plenty of expandability, most people are gonna need multiple dongles and adapters or hubs to use their various external devices. And while most of these work well, my biggest problem is they ruin the overall clean aesthetic of the iMac, or worse, they actually interfere with or block the iMac's ventilation or speakers. But what if we could add not just more USB and SDXC expandability to the iMac and could do it without distracting from the design or even taking up any extra space on our desk, but also add terabytes of NVMe storage to the iMac? Well, today we're gonna look at that very solution. Let's do this. It's the money. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ, and this is the Mini Sapporo 7-in-1 USB-C hub for the 24-inch M1 iMac. And while for the most part, this is just a typical USB-C hub that works pretty much like any other USB hub, it takes a single USB-C port from the Mac and splits it into multiple other connections like USB-A ports and SD card readers. This hub has two distinct features that separate it from any other hub for the iMac and make it probably the best accessory for the M1 iMac that I've come across in the year and a half since buying this all-in-one system. The agenda today is to quickly unbox the hub, see what it comes with, check out the features, get it set up and connected to the iMac, test the features and make sure all the ports work and operate at the rated speeds so we can finish up by determining if this is a good value USB-C hub for the iMac. The first thing in the box is the hub itself and unwrapping it we see a nice solid aluminum hub measuring 13.5 centimeters wide by 15.08 centimeters deep by 2.15 centimeters tall. There's a permanently attached 40 centimeter USB-C cable on the rear of the hub. On the right side, we find the ports, which include both micro and full-size SD card readers rated at 150 megabytes per second, a 10 gigabit USB type A port and a 10 gigabit type C port and two USB 2.0 ports. That's six ports, but I said this is a seven in one hub. And for the seventh port, we need the rest of the stuff in the box which includes a screwdriver, a couple of screws, and a thermal pad. Now that we have this stuff, we can flip the hub over to discover a panel we can now remove to find an M.2 connector in which we can install an SSD. The hub supports both NVMe and SATA M.2 SSDs in 42, 60, and 80 millimeter formats. For testing, I'm using a 2280 500 gigabyte Crucial P3 NVMe SSD. With the SSD installed, we can connect the hub to the iMac, and you may have noticed the lip on the top of the hub. As you probably guessed, this allows the foot of the iMac to snugly fit into the top of the hub, which almost seamlessly integrates the hub into the iMac without increasing the footprint and only adds just over a half an inch of height to the Mac. The USB-C cable can be routed through the stand and plugged into one of the USB-C ports on the rear. They also left just a little room around the stand to account for normal manufacturing tolerances and so you don't damage or scratch the iMac. Now that it's all set up, let's explore the performance of the hub. And the first thing to explain is this is a USB 3.2 Gen 2 hub. So it's limited to 10 gigabits or 1250 megabytes per second transfer rates. Therefore, plugging it into the 40 gigabit Thunderbolt doesn't make it faster. I tested it, you get the same speeds connected to the Thunderbolt port as you do on the USB-C port. And for those of you who then wonder, why not just make it a 40 gigabit Thunderbolt hub? Well, that would triple the price and make it a whole different class of device. For testing, I used a combination of the Blackmagic Disk speed test and actual file transfers so we can see actual real world speeds, not synthetic benchmark sequential read write speeds because those don't represent what you'll see in real life use. So the first thing I did was populate all seven of the ports and unlike some hubs I've tested, they all work independently of each other. 
it's common to see, especially the SD card readers, to actually be a single split connection, so only one of the readers connect at a time, but not the case with this hub. You can access files from devices on all seven ports. Let's look at some speed, starting with the installed NVMe SSD, and the Blackmagic disk speed test gave us 819.6 megabytes per second write and 453.4 megabytes per second read. Transferring a dozen files ranging in size from a few megabytes to several gigabytes, totaling 17.3 gigabytes, the files transferred from the Mac to the NVMe in 21.59 seconds, or 800.8 megabytes per second. Transferring the same files from the NVMe back to the Mac took 25.25 seconds for a speed of 684.8 megabytes per second, which is actually closer to the read-write speeds I get with the crucial NVMe SSD in my iNeo NVMe USB-C enclosure, which was the fastest NVMe enclosure I owned until this one. The Blackmagic test gave me lower than actual read speeds for some reason, but the actual file transfer speeds, 800 write and 684 read, is 6 to 8% faster than the iNeo actively cooled enclosure, so I'm very impressed with those speeds, and coming within 65% of the max theoretical speeds of USB 3.2 Gen 2 is really good for a multi-port hub. Now, I did a lot of testing of all the other ports. I used 170 megabyte per second UHS-1 SD and micro SD cards. And for the USB ports, rather than using slow USB thumb drives, I'm using my Samsung T7 and Wise USB drives. Now, one thing I discovered while testing is that the Blackmagic drive speed test, like we saw with the NVMe test, was very inconsistent. So I'm gonna rely on the actual transfer speeds, which were consistent and repeatable. And while I have like a page plus of data, my main concern was, are the speeds of the devices connected to the hub the same as the device directly connected to the iMac? And are the transfer speeds between devices connected to the hub consistent? And I can say they are. Starting with the SD card reader, the transfer speeds between the SD card and the iMac were 153 megs read and 89 megs write, which is actually faster than my USB card reader and does meet the manufacturer's rated speed of the hub. The transfer speeds between the Samsung T7 and the iMac were 678 megabytes per second read and 405 write, again, within 10 megabytes per second of the drive connected directly to the iMac. I also used a USB-C to USB-A cable to test the 3.2 Gen 2 Type A port with the T7 drive, and those speeds were the same. Now, with the Samsung T7 plugged into the Type A port, the Ys in the Type C port, the SD card in the reader, I transferred the 17.3 gigs of files back and forth between everything connected to the hub. And I'm not gonna spend a whole bunch of time on this. Feel free to pause if you wanna study the numbers, but I'll just say that first, I was impressed with the transfer speeds between the Samsung T7 and the NVMe drive in the hub and moving files from the SD card to the NVMe was just as fast as moving them to the iMac. All the rest of the speeds were great and exactly what I'd expect from even a much more expensive hub. Now, I didn't test the speeds of the USB 2 ports other than to verify they work because at this point in almost 2023, there are very few reasons to use USB 2 for file transfer. And for those that do, speeds aren't really a concern. I just expect most people will use these for specific USB 2 devices like third-party keyboards or mice like I did for the wireless RF dongle. It worked great, no problems on my keyboard and mouse, even when doing all those file transfers. And it does all that while staying very cool. In fact, it's a little cool in my studio this time of year, winter in Colorado, but even so, while transferring 300 plus gigabytes of data from the Samsung to the NVMe drive, the hub never rose above ambient room temp. And while the Crucial P3 is a fairly cool operating SSD, the bigger reason is this hub doesn't include power delivery. There's no external supplemental power source. It simply splits the USB power from the iMac, delivering the required five volts to each port to simply power any device connected like our external USB drives. 
So while you can slowly trickle charge your cell phone, you aren't getting fast charging wattages from this hub, which is okay in my opinion. Supplemental power does generate the majority of the heat in the ICs that handle power delivery in hubs. And because this is an iMac specific hub, which doesn't use USP power like say a MacBook can, there's really no need for it. Overall, this may be the perfect hub for the iMac, and I think it has the perfect balance between style and functionality because while the USB-C protocol does allow you to split out more connections like Ethernet, audio output, and even display output, adding more ports takes away from the clean aesthetic and reduces the overall bandwidth and very likely drives off the cost. If I have to find a needs improvement, it would have to be the lack of colors. While there are green, blue, and silver versions of this hub available, the iMac also comes in purple, red, and yellow. I asked Mini Sapporo about this, and they said they have received customer requests for additional colors, and they are working with their manufacturing partners to make all six colors available. Final conclusion, it has a built-in expandable storage all the ports most people want added to an iMac. It's fast, cool, solidly constructed, and aesthetically, it looks like it's physically part of the iMac without taking up any extra room or physically impeding the function of the iMac. Sounds like a winner, and it only costs $90, which is cheaper than a similar kind of hub for the Mac Mini I reviewed was at the time. And that only had a 2.5 inch SATA bay and no type C port. So I'd have to say this is a really good value, especially because I don't know of another hub with the features of this, especially the M.2 bay, specifically designed for the M1 iMac. Now, I'm actually filming this on Cyber Monday, and the Mini Sapporo Hub is on sale for $72. That sale will probably be over by the time this video posts in a few weeks, but there will probably be more sales just like it. And as I've learned, products like this typically pretty quickly come down in price, like the Mac Mini Hub I mentioned earlier. It's like $30 cheaper now. So for current pricing and availability, check the link in the description below. While you're down there, be sure to click that like and subscribe. And as always, if you have any questions, ask in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.